the guy who he's playing. Yeah. Though. And, oh, um, yeah. He's actually a league uh, franchisee for New England, so <laughs> he's uh, played a lot in Houston and then moved back to Connecticut and New Jersey, and yeah, so as you can imagine, it. Yeah, it was 7.20 Fargo so. is a uh, pretty tough ask. It's about what my Fargo is, so yeah, he's definitely got a chance. Saying, so, you know, he's already playing on the, uh, Kevin's already playing on the TV table, uh, and he went hill hill with Jordan Shepard. Mm. So, yeah, this is actually, yeah, must be pretty tight game then. Yeah, and if you speak to Kevin, he had a couple of chances where he just missed the odd ball or just got a little funny off the break. Was that on the TV table there, Matt? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's tough playing on this TV table. It plays a lot different than um, the outside tables. You yes. get a lot dr a draw easily, and uh, the angles are a little bit more wider. Yeah, I think with the slick cloth and obviously the lights and the heat from everything and you know, it definitely changes the conditions and it plays super consistent. I like the way it plays, you know what I mean. But however, it's uh, it's definitely different than what I'm used to, and different on the than on the outside tables. Yeah, and obviously that's uh, consistency-wise. That's a shout out to um, you know our our table coming up with views in Colorado. So they're here every day in the morning before you guys see them, making right. sure everything's great. And uh, Dave and everybody from uh, from Colorado has been. Fantastic with the tables. Yeah, and I do think that um, while Tom Cousins isn't uh, super familiar with like American Pool, if you call it, but um, he, I think he is pretty in tune with how this fresh felt does play. So he has that going for him as well. Yeah, I say probably the U.S. aren't really aware of him, but in the last three years, he's probably played more TV table matches than he has off the TV table. Yeah. And so he's the uh, world he's used English to the great number one. Yeah. Put it like that. Yeah, he's yeah, definitely I mean, used to that. And, uh, um, that's a big, big advantage, you know, even if the, I know the cue ball is different. I think the weight is, it's a little bit smaller when correct. you're playing uh, with the red and yellow balls. But yeah, like it kind of just reacts similar. Like you can tell even if you watch YouTube videos and such, the way they kind of like slow roll that ball in and such. Like he's really in tune with the, the fresh felt to whereas a lot of pool halls in the U.S., unless it's in really nice areas, they're usually pre warring cloth. That's the thing. It yeah. plays perfect. I'm not used to the perfect equipment. So the more I get comfortable, I think that um, I'll play even better. Yeah, and I think, obviously, watching you play, and it's a great break from Kevin there, but uh, I think this format shoots you. You shoot pretty quick anyway, naturally, is what it seems like. And oh, yeah. The shot clock doesn't really seem to... Yeah. Come into effect with you at all. Um, yeah, only the 15 second gets a little bit rough for everybody, and I think a big factor is I'm not much of an eight ball player, so the patterns I'm not going to see as fast and as easy as somebody who like plays eight ball all the time. Even if they're just like you know a casual league player, they might see the patterns like simpler and easier than I would. So if it was nine ball, you could give me like a 10 second shot clock. But if it was right. you know eight ball. Sometimes I'm like, oh man, you know, like the 15 second, it gets pretty, pretty stiff. Yeah, know. and I think with nine ball, obviously, you know, even from my skill level playing, there's, a, there's not much thinking to do, you know. Right. You go from one to yeah, two. one objective. Yeah, I mean, whereas, you know, it's so uh, subjective, eight ball, because there's a million ways to skin a cat, right? Exactly, yeah. Some people, you can honestly, you know, say it's easier because you have more options to shoot at, but you could also think of it, there's a lot more obstacles. And there's just so many different ways you can look at it. Honestly, yeah. it's hard to say whether it's harder or easier than nine ball. I think that they all are equal in their difficulty. It just depends on the rule set. Yeah, hundred percent. And so, uh, for me, there's a lot more choices in eight ball to make wrong. So uh, yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> I'm you probably mean? a little bit uh, more inclined to feel like I'm better at nine ball because I don't have to think about it. To the game here, though, uh, he's he's pretty jarred on this one. He might even punch over and try to hit into it now, but it's going to not allow for much shape unless he hits it just perfect like he did. Yeah. So, uh, now, he might have to just slow roll this, try to miss the 13, and just bump onto the 9 to hold his cue ball. I think that might be his play here. Yeah, I think he'll just kind of take his medicine on the 6. and Because uh, it's really touchy right here to not move the balls too much and to not get hooked. Yep, just and like he's gone that. right in between. Yeah, it's a great shot. 
Now he's going to have to maybe shoot this four past the side up in the uh, upper corner, closer to the spot. Just get this six with inside, kind of kill it. Yeah, I really hate shooting balls past the side pocket. If there's any shot that anybody should practice in pool, it's shooting balls past the side pocket, if you know what I mean. You yeah. know how the four is right there if you're shooting it up to the pocket closer, just how he is. Any variation of this shot right here. So then how are you approaching this ball? Are you looking at playing the little bottom inside to keep it pulled in? Are you looking to play top? Uh, mm, yeah. With this, it looks like his only pocket that goes is the one that his hand is over, no? Yeah, so. But it doesn't even go there, no? He can't spin it. He's going to have to play it right where he's playing the four. He's going to have to pinch the cue ball back and then just get whatever angle he can to put that eight in the same pocket. So yeah, he's just kind of. This is tough right here because his angle is like almost right to scratch, it looks like, on the side. You have to jack up maybe a little bit. Slick table, we might be able to beat the. Yep, he beat it. Yeah, and he just drilled it. That's a great out from Kevin. And that was a really good out. I say, as you've seen, you've not seen him play much, but he's, uh, no, yeah. he's definitely a good player. Absolutely. From ball break. I noticed that uh, you switched cues and you last, you went for your break cue and then you went to your playing cue to the uh, side ball break. Yeah, when I'm using the side ball break, I use my regular playing cue because um, I want to be able to get the proper you know, low outside spin to be able to hit off the side rail and crack back into the rack at the, the point that I want to. But when you when you hit that side break with the brake cue, you kind of just lose a little bit of accuracy. It's not as much about power with that side break. It's more about the an accurate shot, so I hit it with my playing cue. So you broke well the first one and went from ball break. Yeah, and, then you and switched. I, didn't get a, I didn't make a ball on the break. I broke dry and you can't fiddle around with that too much. As soon as you either scratch or make uh, a dry break, then that's when you need to change it up to the side ball break. Yeah, and we've kind of spoke a lot about with the eight ball being on the spot. Yeah, if the eight no. ball wasn't on the spot, then you'd be able to center break for a whole lot longer. But with it being on the spot, it kind of the felt, you know, it'll war wear in just a tiny bit, and then all of a sudden the balls don't go on the side. And once that happens, you, you can't rely on, you know, luck. You have to play a skilled break to where you know which balls are going in at which time. Yeah, we've not really seen, no one's really worked it out yet. I say it's, you know, you look at all the disciplines and especially the American game, you guys are renowned for the rack and knowing where to break and how to manipulate everything, whereas, it's quite interesting to see that the players are still trying to trying to work out where to break from, and right. everyone's doing a completely yeah. different break, and it's no one's seen to work it out that, yet. Uh, that is super unique. Like, there's no perfect way to do it. However, in a lot of the match room events with like their formats and whatnot, um, the breaking format, you see a lot of like because they have to break from the center, like the the half circle, the break, and then. Um, side of the one and slap off the side rail and go back into it. So almost similar to a second ball break, but they're doing it off the head ball. So like when it comes to those formats, it really restricts you on the break. So I'm not a huge fan of those. I yeah. like to where you can kind of put the cue ball wherever you want and break them and maybe do wood rack then because they're worried about so many replicated same break and run patterns. But just take away the, the template rack at that point, huh? Right, Just how yeah. you guys have the uh, foldable one to where it's, uh -huh. there still might be a small little gap. You try to do the best that you can, but it makes it a traditional, you know, it's not the same pattern every single time. Where yeah, you get that magic rack, it's like you see the same pool. It's almost like boring, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, and I think uh, it's just interesting to see how each player is kind of taking a different route, whereas, you know, you've gone from ball break and then you're comfortable with the cut break and you've switched your cues where, you know, Tom's seems to be drawing it, the cue ball back to the top rail, mm -hmm. which is a traditional English that a ball is traditional, break. Yeah, I've seen a yeah. few matches and that's that's what they do, so. But obviously it's a different cue ball and I say it's it's weird to see uh, American pool and not see the exact same spot on the exact same break, and it's it's kind of refreshing. Yeah, I wonder how much he's practiced the side ball break because eventually um, it's going to break down to where that head ball break doesn't work, yeah. I believe. Okay. That's my opinion. I mean, obviously, he might make it to the finals or whatever and 
you know, crack them from the front and still make a bowl. But um, in my opinion, I think it's going to start getting tougher to, you're going to see more dry breaks if he does break from the, the center and just, that's how I see the diamonds breaking down in the past, but, you know, we'll see. Yeah, and that's, uh, I suppose, the insight of, uh, and the advantage of being an American pool player on an American yeah, table, right? For sure. I'm yeah, sure. I definitely love the way these tables play and everything. It's just, eight ball is definitely a little bit not like my number one game, but, you know, you got to be able to win with your secondary game. you got to be able to win with your B game and everything like that. And at the end of the day, there's, you know, it's it's still the same. You just put balls in the hole. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, if we know Tom Cousins, if he if he has this, I'm sure you'll see him practicing that side ball break. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I, he might I, give I, him a little advantage right there. And I and I think he, if, like I said, if he does like one or two dry breaks, he I'm sure he has that in his back pocket to be able to do a side ball break, and that, we might see him switch that later on. Yeah, and that's a uh, two another, to one now. Yeah, another great out from Tom. I say he's. Boringly good. He just, considering it's the first time he's ever played American eight ball, it's it's worrying. Yeah, and he's had really good splits and really good breaks. Dry. And then uh, there goes the commentator's curse. So he broke really well against Jordan. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, if you smash the balls 200 miles an hour, you don't make a ball in the break with 15 balls on the table, you're not breaking from the right spot, period. You know what I mean? It's just like, you can say it was the rack or whatever. You can't take chances. You got to do something else that's going to produce better results. So I'm sure he'll change his uh, break after that. Yeah, and he had a great success in his uh, first match on the TV table. But as you know, the conditions change, and you know. Yeah, with the eight on the spot, it's like the slightest change in the condition will make the break different. But with, if it was like the normal one on the spot, you'd be able to get them balls to go on the side a whole lot easier. And, Wing balls would go more often, but not as much with the uh, eight on the spot. It makes it a little bit more difficult. This is really tough right here. He's got the proper angle to take the 15 in, but he is risking it a little bit um, on trying to get shape after. It's going to have to go well for sure. Yep, and his 14 ended up still in the same bad position. Yeah, and it's. Um very rare that you'll see Tom Cousins play safe. Yeah. So he's, uh, well, I mean, yeah, I'm with him. Yeah. You know, if you can see the finish line, even if it's uh, tough to reach, you know, sometimes you're not able to see the finish line at all if the guy's sitting there running out on you. So if you can see the finish line, you should probably go for it, yeah. especially in a format like this. 100%. He kind of says that the standard's so good now is he'd rather go for it than give someone else a exactly. chance at any other Always shot. Always play the right shot, of Correct. course. But, like I said, if you can see the finish line at all, then you know you should probably go for it. Always attack. Got to win with offense. You can use good defense to prolong and eventually you know, use your offense to win, but at the end of the day, you're still going to have that offense that's going to win. It's the only way you're going to be able to win. Gosh, what a shot there. Yeah, and he's, uh, yeah, again, the first time he's played with an American cue ball was Tuesday. Yeah, that was really good. Could not have gotten any better right there. But uh, welcome to Top Cat. I sure. say he's, uh, he's the world number one English eight ball for a reason. Does Ultimate Pool have any anticipations of uh, making any nine ball events in the future? Uh, no, we don't have any nine ball events. Because um, I think it'd be a great format to do same thing, match timer, pretty much all the same rules and whatnot. No. Even yeah, we don't have nine ball events, but we have something else in the works that yeah. will, will appease the uh, American rotation specialists. For sure. Yeah, so there's a... Um, Especially with the league. I just think that there's definitely a market there, you know what I mean? Like, uh, there'll definitely be other options available. There's a huge market available. for 8-ball as well, especially in the league um, level. I think that the majority of leagues are 8-ball. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's the most played and in this the world is, Yeah, well. and, th and this is a great format to be all structured and everything 
four eight ball and four tournaments in league and everything. Whereas uh, I don't know how it is in in the UK and Europe, but in the US there's so many different variations of the rules and eight ball and whatnot to where you know it's just like oh before you play a match or anything like that are we playing this okay yeah. we're doing this rule how about yeah. this rule are we doing this rule yeah 100 percent and that's kind of the the thing with us about international eight ball rules is you know we've got so many countries playing it and it's nice the fact that you know you might end up going to the uk and you can play this event and then go play any other event in any other part of the world, and it's the same rules. Right. I think that's really important to have just one rule set because, yeah, it is. You know, we've all been at an old bar and they want you to rack behind the line, and yeah. if you scratch, you've got to kick at the eight because it's right. in the kitchen. And I say, just, yeah, that's the idea for us. And same for the amateurs, they play the same format, the same even with the league, and it's all just regardless of what skill level, where you're from. If you're playing out on the pool, you know exactly what rules you're playing. Right. That's how it should be. He's going to have to develop his three here. Looks like he's got a good opportunity to off maybe the seven. Looks like he probably has the angle to do so right here. He's going to have to judge his draw pretty well, though, if he does decide to use it right now. But it's definitely going to have to be developed. It can't go in any pocket, really. Yeah, I think he's uh, definitely looking at the angle right now. If he hits into it, shape isn't guaranteed. But yeah, just his cue ball just seems so in tune already. And the adjustment he's made so quick is... Yeah, one of the shots that was really killer that he played uh, against me was one where his cue ball was almost on the rail and then his seven was up by maybe the second diamond away from the corner pocket. And uh, it, was a, it was a pretty sharp cut, but he just floated it in. And for me, I don't get a whole lot of practice on those floating in shots because I don't trust any table right. to hit that soft. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I have to hit it at least a certain firmness to know it's not going to like roll on me or anything like that. But he just trusted it and floated it right in and if he didn't float it in he wouldn't have been able to get the position to run out like he had to hit it dead perfect to get out and he did so. Yeah and I think that's uh, just one of them things obviously this is your second event and I think the more you play and the more you kind of get used to these conditions. And oh yeah. You know, it's uh, you've already had a great start, and you've you've already got a good hit list to your name. Uh, right. You've took down some monsters already, as you are yourself. But uh, I think the more you get used to the conditions. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get my hands on uh, playing on some newer cloth somehow, and I know that that's gonna help because I'm used to playing in on the most war-in conditions. The angles are completely different, and uh, the way that the balls react are different. So. It's not that I haven't played on this equipment before, and it's not necessarily an excuse, but um, it does take some adjusting to be able to go from a super war in table to one that's such fresh and clean balls and everything like that to where the angles play a little bit more slick. I mean, it just glides off the balls. You almost, like, whenever I am back home, I have to cut the balls more because there's a layer right. of dirt on the yeah, ball. Yeah. <laughs> Almost sticks through a little yeah. bit more. So yeah, yeah, and we are definitely doing our best to uh, be on TV. So uh, that's something that uh, we're already in the UK. We're televised in exactly uh, 52 countries currently. We're televised in, and uh, you know the next one is is going to be the USA. Yeah, we'll make it happen. Really good break. Not too much is tied up here. I think stripes are the balls to take. Yeah, He's going to want to clear out that 13 pretty quick so that he can go after the 14 because the 8 is going to have to go in that pocket over there. Yeah, and he had to play a, with international 8 ball rules. He had to play a little shot because uh, obviously you can't play a dirty combo. Yeah, you can't play a combo. I had to ask that my first match. I didn't know for real. Forgot the rules. 
So yeah, and uh, it's 4-1, but I don't really think Kevin's really made any mistakes by breaking dry. It's just- I almost might shoot the 13 right now. It's kind of a little bit of traffic to get back on the balls, but I'm telling you the 13's gonna have to go away pretty quick, because otherwise um, the 14's gonna be tough to get at. Mm. Yeah, got a lot more draw than he wanted to there. If he can get past that six, he's good. Very good hold. Yeah, he's uh, landed nicely. I think he might. Be a little straight on it. Yeah, I think he's got the angle to go forward with topspin, but that five is just huge with him trying to go forward. I wonder if the 15 goes past all that traffic. Yeah, there's definitely. 15 goes up in that corner. He should just play the 15 in the corner, probably. It's like he's trying to punch and force Ooh, it. He over. had an angle to go there. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good shot. Still got a lot to do, though. Yeah, he's going to have to just play his cue ball into the three and stop it. Nice just top spin, float it. That, I would not have played it like that. Yeah, no, I think he was trying to kind of come around two rails, but mm -hmm. I think yeah. he just played it soft and took his kind of medicine yeah. from the three. Yeah, with the new felt and everything, and everything being clean, if you just hit that ball really soft with a little bit of top outside, you'll click and just plant right on that three. And it's a little farther than you want, but it's much better than this. You risked it a lot doing that, but he can go ahead and still pot this in. And he did. Amazing. Yeah, made a good shot and a good recovery. So that makes it 4 2, and we are just at the 19 minute mark. 500 Fargos on a bar box. They're capable of running out. Anybody who's capable of running out, you give them the opportunity to, and they might just surprise you. All they got to do is play out of their shoes for one time to win a tough match against an opponent in a race of seven on a bar box, you know. If yeah. it was a big table, if it was a longer race, it would be a different story. Yeah, I mean, 100%, and I think that's kind of what makes it so exciting is, I mean, Tom Cousins played flawless, and he's gone and broke dry, and all of a sudden Kevin can be, you know, 4-3 and with the break, and it's a whole different game. And you see he went to the side there, but he, he didn't make a ball. I don't know if he um, maybe didn't get the result he wanted or if he's kind of just still experimenting on where he wants to break from the side and which ball he wants to hit, how he wants to hit it. But the way that they uh, broke out is disgusting. <laughs> They're all on one side. Oh, and if he was playing that, then that yeah, was a shot right there. I didn't, definitely didn't see that. I don't know if you did, but I think he was. I don't know what just happened. The problem is his five still needs to be developed, and it's hard to do it. I think he can uh, slip past the four right now if he cuts the six in and just come off that side rail just to clip the five out. He's almost got the angle to where he can just float it, but I think he's going to have to punch it over to play the four on the side, to be honest with you. Yep, just like that. And if it stops, yep, should be able to come back in it. Nothing's guaranteed. As far as him getting shape after the breakout, though, that's the problem. You always want a ball like maybe hanging in the hole, or maybe if there was a ball up by the uh, bottom right corner from where, um, or I guess the top right corner of where we're looking at right now, if there was a ball like over in that position, then he could uh, easily make his breakout and have a guaranteed ball to shoot at. So, yeah, he's not even going to opt to shoot it right now because he knows that it's going to be tough. Yeah, but yeah, now he, what he's, he's still here? yeah, he's still kind of stuck with the same problem. Can he thin the three and miss the side and then go up to it? Yeah, I think he's but uh, he's definitely looking at the seven ball. He's definitely down on the seven. Yeah, it's just you almost wanted to. I would rather him back cut the four from where he was at before than to go ahead and shoot more balls because now he's in a really tough position. He's going to have to shoot the four now. If he doesn't shoot the four now, it's a mistake. He has the best angle that he can have on it. 
Yeah, and I think that comes with the, the shot clock and the match clock. Is yeah, you, you kind of have to force to, it. Yeah. You don't got a whole lot of time to think. You kind of just got to keep potting balls. Yeah, saying. Uh, Can't play safety either, you know, like deliberate foul safeties, which a lot of people, I think, that um, do play like maybe League or American 8 ball are used to being able to play deliberate foul safeties. Yeah, and obviously. Especially the old school guys, you know what I mean, like that. You know, and obviously the rules are designed to make it entertaining. Yeah, and, exactly. You and know, there's not a problem with it, but I think that that's, that's definitely a learning curve for, um, like I said, especially the old school eight ball players. They're all about that, just tinking it up, playing a deliberate foul and tying something up. Look at this, does it oh, drop? Oh, that was a great Ooh. effort. Yeah, you wouldn't have had the, the shape on the five, but he would have liked a, a stab at it, maybe going, uh, kicking it. Yeah, and I say these That's are, not going to be good because now it's going to be almost guaranteed for 5 2 now. Yeah, and. Uh, the only ball that's even remotely trouble is kind of the 10, if you will, but I would honestly maybe go at it right now. Yeah, and. I don't think the commentator's curse is going to work here, but I definitely uh, think Tom Cousins is going to be out from here. Yeah, I don't and think as you said, he's. Could say, he's got the 15 as a backboard, too, honestly. Yeah, but how, how straight this guy cues, I don't yeah. think he needs a backboard. Yeah, no, for sure. And the one thing I will say about Tom, and I say this every time he plays, is he plays quick, but it doesn't look like he's playing quick. Right, he moves. He's slow. just so smooth, and but yeah, he's got so much more time. Mm -hmm. And he'll run a rack out at the same time as Chris will, but he just looks like he's took an extra minute of time. Sorry about that. We had a little bit of a dog uh, barking in the background. Yeah, we uh, maybe we wanted some action. Yeah, we just met Sketch the dog that uh, just happened to bump into the. Uh, he was room. barking. He wanted some action, man. Yeah, well, as you know, a lot of Americans will bark, but yeah. that doesn't mean they're going to bite, Ricky, right? <laughs> hey, it happens all over. It happens all over. Yeah, if uh, if this a ball was at Kansas City on the Valleys. I don't think you like shooting it in the side, but in the diamonds, it'll go in the side easy. So why is that? Why do you prefer a, a, a diamond side versus a, a valley side? Well, the valley sides are cut a little bit wider. Like the angle that they're cut is a little bit more obtuse. Whereas if you look at the way that the diamonds are cut on the side, they're not dead straight, but they're not as flared out as much as the um, as the valleys are. Like the valleys will just straight spit it out. They hit that front point, whereas yeah, exactly. in an American table, you want to aim for the back of that exactly. pocket. And that kind of catches them out sometimes. And that's what I mean, like when you're aiming for the back of the pocket on a valley, you'll hit the heart of the pocket. It's supposed to go in. Yeah. And it goes boom. Right. <laughs> and it's like a pinball machine. Saying that's a. Another, another tough layout here. Yeah, it's an, another good break from him, but he just doesn't seem to be getting the, the layout he needs. Yeah, everything is looking weird at the moment. I wonder if the 5-6 combo looks any good. Still going to have to do something with the 3, but with the 4 close by the side, it should be relatively easy. Nothing down table for the solids to really connect. Yeah, to get no. on that four, though, is the problem. I almost think, can you take the uh, hard 15 on the strikes? But mm -hmm. I think he's looking to just shoot and stop and get on the six ball. Oh, yeah. look at this. Huh? That was a good shot. But he's still got to develop this uh, yeah, three. three. Oh. Yeah, because if you're rolling into breaking it out, it's not really a problem. But the fact that he's going to have to draw like into the breakout, really makes it 
not very Yeah, or do you easy. think he could potentially play the 3-4 uh, combo with the 4 being over the hole already in the middle? Oh, no. I wouldn't. <laughs> that, <laughs> him, I mean, for him to even get shape on either the 4 or the 3 right now is going to be tough. He's going to have to, like, force his cue ball straight down the rail, like, straight down the table, almost a linear... Um, I was going to say tangent line. He definitely didn't want to rub into that. that. That just ruins his whole rack here. He's probably just going to have to just roll up onto the three yeah, and leave him only the nine. Yeah, and I if he gets the three over the side, it might be a good shot because it's going to be tough for Cousins to leave a return shot. Yeah, see, if you'd have got that three over the side a little bit more, it'd be really tough for Cousins to leave him um, a, t a tough return shot. But now, I think Cousins could um, really just honestly tick the nine and leave his cue ball yeah, by so the... I say the middle, middle pocket's blocked and he can't... The eight ball blocks the... Uh, yeah, he doesn't have to do much. Yeah. Yeah, just like that, really. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't have even done that. That kind of ties up his ball for no reason. Because he didn't need to. Yeah, but obviously... I'm not going to question his decision. He knows what he's doing, but... I feel like uh, even if he left the cue ball right where he's at, somewhere in that area, and he doesn't put the nine over there, like he maybe hits it just a little softer, he still can't do anything with his four or the three. Right, yeah, I think just with being five too often. <laughs> that does you make know, a difference, doesn't kind it? Of, you know, it's, with ten minutes left, it yeah, does make a little bit different. He's kind of in the, in the he, driving he, seat. He, and he'll make it one pocket if he feels like it, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not that he knows what that is yet, so we're... Uh, oh, look at this shot. He hooked him on every ball. He hooked him on every ball, I think. He can only just thin the 11, and if he does, it'll think it'll be a scratch. It'll be a dead shot for sure. He's going to have to kick into the 11-14, and maybe it goes. I think that that's the shot, if it goes. Yeah. Otherwise, I have no idea what he's got here. Maybe he's trying to make the uh, 15 off the 10. Oh, we could see the, more of the 11 than I thought. Oh, look no at this way. shot. Look at this shot. Oh, wow. wow. Oh. Oh. Yeah, because he moved the four. I thought the four moved a touch whenever he shot that ball. If he didn't, if he didn't make a foul, that was very creative for him to find the blocker there as well as playing the safe. Yeah, I think we that was very creative. one of the returns of the night if that wasn't a foul. Yeah, to no, that was, that was a really good shot if he didn't make a foul right there. Yeah, to bank the uh, to judge the cross and play the safe. And play the safe was really good. Yeah. Saying that makes it uh, five three with eight minutes to go. So that's what I mean. You know, as far as maybe uh, putting that nine over there in dangerous waters. However, you know, Tom definitely gone back to the uh, front ball break. He made a perfect shot if he didn't make a foul. Yeah, he said, forget the side ball break. I broke dry. Yeah. I'm going to go to the center and hit it harder. That's what yeah. I'm going to do. So, yeah, we uh, definitely put a little bit more on that one. Yeah. Juice it up a little bit. It almost looks like they broke from the other end. Got the eight and everything packaged up on the breaking end. Oh my, that was very uncharacteristic. Yeah, and this is a massive opportunity for Kevin massive to get him back in. If he wins this game, this we have a match. I'll tell you that right now. If he gets out right now, we got a match. Because not only is it, would it be 5-4, but the reason being would be because Tom made a big error there. Yeah, and obviously it's different if the guy just runs out, you sit in your chair, whatever. But if you make an error that leads to them getting out, it, it hurts much more. Yeah, and obviously with Kevin to break on the next one, it's, uh, it's definitely yeah, could be a game changer. It could be a huge boost of confidence if he gets out here. Six almost hampered him. I think he's good. Roll forward and probably take the 11. And then he'll shoot the nine up in the corner past the seven. And then I think the 12 goes in the side pretty comfortably. And that's the pattern I would play. If you don't get the angle 
on the nine in the corner right here, then that's a problem. Can't really end up shooting that nine on the side, I don't think. Yep, and he recognizes that. Yeah, this could sting a little bit for Tom if he cleans up here. Yeah, and that's the thing about this format. It's you think you can't it's, make one mistake. Yeah, you think it's game over and you're in the driving seat. It's five two and. You miss one shot, and all of a sudden it's five. Clock's five. always going. Yeah. No bathroom breaks. You can't sit there and oh, I'm gonna look around, think about it, soak in my lead. You know what I mean? It's right back into it. You got to produce the results right back into it. No participation trophies. Winner take all. I don't think they'd let me. And what a break! How many did he make? Yeah. It's good. This opening shot's a little bit suspect. He can back at that 11 a little bit. He's going to have to let the cue ball run loose. Can he almost see the full team ball as well? Or do you think that gets a little finicky? Yeah, but that, I mean, what's your shape after that? I mean, that's really... Taking the 11. One, yeah. He's still going to crash into the 9, maybe? No. Oh, oh my wow. gosh, that is so, so bad of a roll right there. And that's what I mean, you had to take it, you had to run it loose. Yeah. And it was really, really important for him to like know where it was gonna run loose to. He's gonna go ahead and just yeah. go like that. Look, at, he can't get hooked by both balls, can he? I wanna nope, say. No, but he's gonna have to take the harder the one. Nine. Yeah. He's gonna have to take the harder one though. These are big pockets. Just make sure you hit it, get enough cut on it. It's hard to overcut this ball. Yep, Good they're shot. big pockets. Yeah, especially, especially with the new cloth and how slick it is, they, yeah. they definitely play a little bit bigger. Absolutely. A little bit of a 50 yard line here. I think he still should be able to manage to Regardless of what hole you pick here, you just got to give your full effort. Collect your 200 for pass and go. Yeah. And that's five to five. And here we are, yeah. Hill, hill with uh, four minutes to go, but it's uh, a race to six. Oh, yeah, because it's on the loser's side. So oh. yeah, so it makes a makes a big difference. Oh my, yeah. I I thought it was a race seven. That's huge. Same break, breaking from the middle, what he's comfortable with, he's gonna smash it. And he did, and oh, oh my he's gone God. dry. Look at this though, he, he's got a shot on nothing. He has a shot on nothing. And I say this every match I commentate, but we might get to see another 6 ball shootout. This might be a little safety battle, I don't know. Yeah, but with only four minutes left, it's uh, this we, is a very telling first shot. What's he going to do here? Is he playing that combo? Oh, oh my wow. Gosh. And that's, wow, and that's there, surprising. There, there really wasn't much to shoot at. I don't think that I can fault him for shooting the combo. The only other thing he could have done is maybe did a little ticky ticky safety on the 12 or something. Yeah, I was thinking just, maybe potentially tie up the six, but also Kevin might be thinking, I don't want to go to a six ball shootout against somebody that's well if he makes that he's you know all he's got to do is develop the six as a normal rack of eight ball but yeah this is definitely not good now oh look oh, at this and look at this and the tables have turned There's again any place you want to be on the table it's not right there that's that new cloth this is hard to judge spins out when you don't expect it does he have a nine? Oh my gosh and he's perfect, Tom. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. I thought he was dead hooked by everything. I'm saying Tom will be smart. He'll, he'll use as much of the match clock and shot clock as he can now because he knows if kind of anything happens and Kevin does get a chance to get back to the table, he'll leave him the, the least amount of time as possible. But... I think he's going to want to go ahead and take this 15 out right after this. Yep. A little straight now. 
kind of makes it to where he's got to play a longer shot. Nothing crazy. I think he's pretty comfortable with these floating in ones. Yeah, he tried to get a little bit better angle. Man, he's going to have to kind of float this 10 in. I feel like he can kill it a little bit, but... Yeah, yeah, see, this is what I mean. It's really hard to kill that ball in on this table. Has he got it? I feel like there's no way he does, right? He might be able to oh, twist it. Right. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's trying to twist it. And there oh it is. Oh my God. Yeah, he's just wow. twisting it over. Just enough, wow. And that's brutal for Kevin. He's probably sat there thinking he's, he might have a chance. And uh, Absolutely. For a guy like Kevin to be out of this tournament already, it's it's a huge wow. one. And, uh, wow. Another millimeter hooked right there, and he wouldn't have been able to curve that as easy. Yeah, and say in the... a stellar shot to get there. Great was. shooting by both players. 100%. And uh, we will be back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Colorado time. And uh, thank you very much, guys, for watching. And uh, we're excited to see you guys tomorrow. And thanks for tuning in. Thank you very much.